All right, the overall transformation doesn't just depend on nucleation. It also depends on growth, right? So growth is, let's imagine we have this scenario where we have um, a particle, which we know is larger than R star, so it's going to continue to grow. The rate of growth depends on a few things. For some given atom that's in the parent phase, it has to diffuse out of the parent phase, right? Whatever bonding is present there, it has to break that bond and, and diffuse out. It has to cross this phase boundary between the two materials, and then it has to attach itself in the correct position of the new phase, right? So all of those things, you could end up with a limiting step, which is going to be diffusion-based, likely, and therefore your rate of growth, g dot, is going to be Arrhenius style, where you have some constant c, but the activation energy is going to be your activation energy for diffusion, right? So taking both nucleation rate and growth rates into account, now we can look at our transformation, right? Since it depends on both, right? Nucleation and growth. And we can plot it against temperature just like we've been doing. So if this is our temperature, the temperature that thermodynamics predicted for this transformation, you had a couple things. First off, we have our nucleation rate is going to be down here n dot now our growth rate it only depends on this act this diffusion one so it's going to be at higher temperatures and then the overall transformation is going to be the product of these two so that will be our overall t dot our transformation rate right now it's more common to think of these in terms of time necessary for the transformation to occur, right? And the inverse of that will be the time to completion. So if we replot these, then we get the following. So this will be temperature on this axis, but now it's going to be time on this axis, right? And we get the following curves. We get curves that look like this. like this, where maybe the light blue line maybe represents 1% transformed, the purple might may, might represent 50% transformed, and the dark blue might represent 99% transformed, for example. And what you see that, again, this is all happening below the temperature that thermodynamics says this should take place at, T alpha beta, and yet there exists right here a temperature where you get your transformation occurring the fastest, right? At this temperature, you get some time where the fastest transformation takes place, right? Now, when they do these, this x-axis is, is in the log scale, so it's actually log of time, right? The y-axis is not log scaled, right? But there exists what they'll call this the nose of the curve, in fact, they'll call these diagrams TTT curves. TTT for time, temperature, transformation, right? And this point right here that it's pointing at right there, that's the nose of the curve. The nose of the C-shaped curve or these TTT diagrams, right? All right. Now, uh, what would be useful for us is to quantify the rate at which these reactions take place. And that is essentially the whole field of kinetics. Kinetics in material science is the study of this time dependence of phase transformations. How quickly can things shift from one phase to another? And that matters for lots of stuff, right? How quickly can the phone in your battery discharge is going to depend on how quickly those reactions, electrochemical reactions, can take place, right? And many, many other examples why we care about this. Uh, take polymer crystallinity, right? As a polymer crystallizes, as you cool it down from a melt, you could plot this. You could do it at a bunch of different temperatures. Let's say you monitor it via X-ray diffraction and you plotted the amount crystallized, right? How much is crystallized as a function of time? Well, if you do this at a really low temperature, the rate of crystallization might be slow. And so you initially don't get very much. It starts to crystallize, so its rate of transformation is increasing, and then it sort of tails off and slows down as it approaches 100%. But if you do this at higher and higher temperatures, it's going to crystallize faster and faster, right? So uh, here's an example where they're taking one over the time necessary to get to 50% transformed, and they're calling at that the rate. Well, we need a better way to do this, and one way to do this is to use the Avrami kinetic equation, right? It's actually named after four people, right? The authors were actually this guy Johnson, Mel, 
Avrami and Kolmogorov, so the JMAK equation, but it's often just called the Avrami equation. And all it is, it's a mathematical expression that basically looks like this S-shaped curve right there, which happens to look a lot like real data. When real materials transform from one phase to another, they typically have this sort of S-shaped curve, and that's what we're seeing here. So that's the only reason we do this, is that mathematically it looks kind of like what we observe in nature. Now what's the expression for this, this Avrami expression? It's 1 minus the exponential of negative k times t to the n, right? So you have some constants here. You have k and n are our time-independent constants. They do depend on temperature, right? They do depend on temperature. They don't depend on time, right? So let's do an example of this. Let's say this. If a polymer has a kinetic Avrami equation n value of 1.7, and it takes 100 seconds for the polymer for the polymer to be 50% crystalline, then how long would it take for it to crystallize to 99%? All right, well, we could solve this. We would uh, say that Y is our fraction of crystallinity. So let's start with the values that we know. We know that it reaches 0 0.5, or 50% crystalline, with 1 minus the exponential of negative K, which we don't know, multiplied by 100 seconds, raised to the n value, which is 1.7. So we could solve for k. Let's go ahead and do so. All right, when I plug that into Wolfram Alpha, I can solve for x, our k value, and it's equal to um, 0.000275. So k is equal to 0.000275. Now that we know k and n, we can solve for the amount of time necessary to crystallize to any arbitrary amount, including 99%. So to do it for 99%, we're going to do 0 0.99 is equal to 1 minus the exponential of negative 0 0.000275 multiplied by our time necessary for crystallization to that amount raised to the 1.7 value, our n value, right? And then plugging in and solving for t, we get that it's equal to... All right, when I go ahead and plug that into Wolfram Alpha, I find that the time necessary for this crystallization is now going to be equal to 304.6, so roughly 305 seconds. Okay, so that's how you use the JMAK or Avrami equation to do uh, kinetics of transformations.